This video will cover bandpass filter design, strictly speaking, the um, RLC variety, the passive uh, filter. So we're going to use resistors, induct and capacitors here to design the RLC circuit. One of the simplest um, RLC uh, passive filters, so bandpass passive filters we can design is a series. Basically, you have an inductor, you have a capacitor, and you have a <clears throat> resistor in series. So whatever frequencies comes out here, then a subset of that frequency from a given frequency to another given frequency will pass through to the output in, the, in here. Again, the process is very similar to the earlier, uh, earlier uh, videos we have done regarding uh, um, uh, filters, low pass filters, high pass filters. Uh, to analyze this thing, we would need to find a relationship in the VI, V out of S in terms of V in uh, of uh, S. S, of course, being J omega L. So we have basically converted this to a phasor domain, J omega L, 1 over J omega C for the impedance of capacitors and resistors stays the same. So uh, the simplest way to work with this is to do a KVL around the loop to be able to arrive at that equation and then we're going to rearrange everything to have that form and we know that is called v out over v in is called h of s in phasor domain we've got the transfer function at that point <clears throat> um, things will so uh, the next step is to find out where are the half power in this particular case this is a bandpass filter which means we at the low at the lower frequencies below in this case below the wc1 well, cutoff frequency one and cutoff frequency two uh, we will have um, no very little or no uh, energy passing through to the output and then between between two points um, you will have uh, energy passing through and then comes back down uh, to to the lower level <laughs> So, so this is the stop band on this side, and then stop band on this side, and the pass band in here. Now the question is, where is this line? Same as what we've talked about before, the cutoff frequencies, both the omega C2 and omega C1, both of those frequencies are where the half power happens. And as we mentioned, half power since we h of s is the ratio of voltage power is going to be square of that so half power basically turns out to be one over square root of two h of max and since this is a passive filter h of max is equal to one so add omega c h of s magnitude of h of s becomes that so basically we have a little bit of work to do here as you can see right here it's set h of s is set to 1 over square root of 2, magnitude of h of s is set to uh, 1 over square root of 2. Solving that gives us omega c1, uh, it's kind of long and drawn out, and omega c2 is basically a quadratic equation that we solve. So now we have omega c1 and omega c2. There are a couple of other terms we really need to be talking about. The, the distance, so the difference between omega c1 and omega c2 is referred to as a beta or a bandwidth. And omega zero is uh, referred to as the uh, center frequency or resonant frequency. And it's, it's basically the point where the filter has the maximum gain or as close to one as possible. And that's omega zero. And omega zero is basically calculated by square root of omega C one times omega C two. So let's go down and take a quick look at this. So, um, um, so uh, the um, the um, omega c omega zero is omega c one times omega by definition is omega uh, square root of omega c one times omega c two. For this particular filter, pretty much all the time for all kinds of filters that we do, all passive filters of RLC, whether this one or the next version we talk about, the omega zero is one over square root of LC. 
and really omega zero is kind of important because that's where we get the maximum th through which basically means the impedance of these two together at that frequency is equal to zero that's another way of calculating omega zero and of course bandwidth is just the difference between the two cutoff frequency that tells us how big the band is that the frequency goes through again this is um this is how the bandpass filter looks like um, you may see bandpass filters shown ideally more like this, but in reality, these, these lines are not straight and they're more curved as we did here. Okay, so now we have omega zero figured that, beta figured that. There is another item which is called Q, and that's called the quality factor. That basically tells us how good a filter we have and has to do with how narrow the band is at a given frequency. And it's a ratio of omega zero over beta. Okay, so that's how it is. And if you, since we know what omega zero is, was beta and beta is, so you can literally um, put them on top of each other, write it in terms of L over CR squared if it's Q. Most of the time, we like to remember Q as omega zero over beta, have beta in this equation and omega zero there. So those are kind of the critical ones. Now, if you were to take this knowledge of Q, beta, and omega zero back up here and plug those values into this particular equation, we could rewrite the equation in this form. The reason this form is important and most of the time we write our transfer function in this form is because it is what we call implementation independent every bandpass first order bandpass filter regardless of how it's designed will have the same characteristic for example another way for us to build a bandpass filter is do a parallel allers rlc circuit in other words your your c and l are in parallel and your voltage is across both of these so if we were to work that out we would find out that this is the equation for h of s in terms of j omega and all that o omega zero again is the same as before beta is different if you remember beta back here was r over l beta here is one over rc of course the definition of q never changes and once again if you write that equation that general equation we have for bandpass filter even though the beta is different the equation stays the same so that's why we like to remember the implementation independent H of S, omega C1, omega C2, because then as long as we have beta, we can solve, we can write those equations and know that this is a bandpass filter. So either way would work, but life is a lot easier if you focus on the, uh, it gives you less things to remember if you focus on the implementation independent equations for H of S. That brings us to the end of bandpass filters. We got two kinds. We got a, we can build one uh, with series, uh, R, L, and C being in series, or we can build one by putting L and capacitor, inductor and capacitor in parallel. They both equal, work equally well. Um, and again, the H of S equation, we can write it the same way. All that changes between the two designs is beta is calculated differently.